of our system when we when we buy off on it, when we say yes, we'll accept the system, is they have to drive on a boat 30 miles offshore with a one watt radio at six feet of height and call us. And we have to be able to receive that signal anywhere in the coast. One watt, one watt radio, six feet of elevation, 30 miles offshore. That's what we have to have, otherwise we cannot accept it. So, yes, it will. The whole, not the whole reason, one of the main reasons we got this Rescue 21 system is to reduce the amount of gaps in coverage that we know that we have. Um, as we all know, the northern coast of California has a lot of little coves, a lot of little backwaters that, because of VHF is line of sight, shoots right over those little coves, and we don't hear them. Um, and unfortunately, that's, that's the technology that we're working off of. Yes, sir? Uh, once this is all set up, which is which will get the fastest response, uh, your 406 CPERB or the DSC? DSC. The reason DSC will get it faster is that 406 EPIRB operates off of satellites, obviously. The 406 goes up, hits the satellite, it transmits a signal constantly saying, I'm in distress, I'm in distress. That signal, until there's a satellite overhead, is just being sent out. So a satellite pass may not happen for two or three hours. You hit that DSC mayday, guess what? It's instantaneous. That's the fastest way to get help. Yes, sir. Is the um, DSC process uh, a background process? Or is it running concurrently with any voice to voice communication? No, it is not working with any voice to voice at all. all right. So it will, will it interrupt your voice to voice? Nope. Okay, so it's a background process. Yes, it is. And it's simultaneous? Yes. Yes. Like I said, it, it's, they, they did their homework when they designed the system. Thank goodness. You know, international telecommunications unit did their job. Yes, sir. Does, let's say both B and C, mm -hmm. they have a DSC radio. Do they have to have an MS, their own MMSI number in it? Or does it matter for them to transmit that A number in? They don't have to have an MMSI on their radio for them to relay the information from mode A. No. Um, but I, I strongly encourage everybody that gets a DSC to get an MMSI assigned to it. It's, again, a position's great, but when I work search and rescue and I launch assets, I'm sending the cutter, I'm sending the boat, I'm sending the helicopter, I'm sending a fish. We have to have a certain bit of information. It's not like you're calling 911 and they go, oh, you're at 25 Park Street. For us, the search is usually the worst part of our job. It's the hardest part of our job. So if you tell me that you're in distress at a certain position, that's great. By the time we get out there, you may not be there anymore. And I don't know what I'm looking for. So if you tell me I'm MMSI1234, that tells me I can look you up, say you're a 27 foot, you know, charter fishing vessel, um, you're owned by Bob, you're, you know, here's your state registration number. <coughs> I can look up a whole bunch of stuff. So when I do have assets that arrive on scene, I can see, I can tell them you're looking for a 27 foot spore fishing vessel. It's registered to this person. So if you do find any persons in the water, that's who you're looking for. And you can then confirm things. Yes, sir. I just got my MSI number today. It was really quick. You can do it in five minutes. You just yeah. got to gather up the data. It's, and you can cross-reference it. You can put your eBird number in. That's what I did. And, and it, it's, it's pretty good in terms of that. I don't know how it goes in terms of your end where it comes up. But are you, you know if the choppers are going to have this in it as well in terms of helos? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I said earlier uh, to a couple folks, I'm the token non-aviator up there, um, so I don't know everything about the helicopters that I should. I know that they've got a different communications package on them than our boats do, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Um, eventually, they will be standardized and we will have standardized equipment, so eventually, I believe they'll have DSC. Um, I don't know how what the timeline is for that, though. And then the other question is, if you're on the buddy list with that, is their position on your chart plotter there, or is it just a digital lat law, and then you, you extrapolate on the chart plotter with your, say, your buddy with the MSI number? Meaning, are you doing that, or is it on screen? Are you with me on that? I'm not sure I follow the question. No, well, it depends say, uh, on your plotter. Yeah, it does it show on your plotter? plotter. Okay. 
You okay. have to have the NEMA out going to your credit. Right. Thank you. <laughs> hey, will this, uh, this uh, DSC be appropriate for people that have like a breakdown? Not in, you know, not a May Day situation, but I, they I, can get can picture, I can picture people with a broken shaft or something or run out of fuel or whatever. Pushing <laughs> distress. That is a distress. It's not a life threatening distress, but you could become one. Be <laughs> like Do I think people will? Will? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> 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 but is that, a, is that an appropriate use of DSC? I mean, should I use it if I break down? Well, let me ask you this. If you break down now, do you call us up saying Mayday, Mayday, Mayday? When you call us on the radio? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's so the way. So DSC should be used, uh, you should push the distress button when it's a Mayday situation, not yeah. just a... Uh, Potential loss of life or property. Right. That's that's when okay, I... Would, I don't see that anywhere, but that, yeah. to me that makes sense. It's, but, it's not a written policy, yeah. and I'm not telling you never press that yeah, unless no. you're in immediate sure. distress. I'm not saying that by any means. I am saying, though, that the majority of people don't necessarily know what the word Mayday means. Yeah. Recreational voters, mom and pop, they don't necessarily know what that means. And when they say Mayday, I mean, we get an adrenaline dump, the hair on the back of our neck stands up, and we go to I mean, we go what we call general quarters. Um, and then we find out that they ran out of beer. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> it's an emergency. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gotten that Mayday Coast Guard, I'm out of beer. You mentioned October would be the implementation date or target date here. Mm -hmm. How about in Oregon? Uh, just across the border, uh, the next Coast Guard unit to the north, um, what we call Group North Bend, which is from Chetco River, or actually from the state line north, they already have this system and it is operational, fully so operational. Newport, Depot Bay, if we're you go there, up there it's, it's all live. Guarantee you, you're gonna, if you hit that button, you're going to get an acknowledgement from a Coast Guard unit. Probably Southeast Alaska also. <laughs> I'm sorry? Southeast Alaska also. Not yet. Alaska poses some very unique challenges for the Coast Guard as, and everybody as a whole. Um, and that's the last place that is going to get the Rescue 21 system, which includes DSC. And it's just a matter of finding, because you have to put those towers, those antennas up within 30 miles of each other. And if you've been up to Southeast Alaska, you know, well, that's not exactly the easiest thing to do to provide a phone line because it has to be able to communicate out to us and then providing it power. So. And we even have those challenges here. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, Rocky Prairie high site, um, I'm sorry, antenna that we're putting up, that one we're actually using satellite signal, or I'm sorry, um, a microwave signal to communicate with. So that's the only way that we could talk to it. Yes, sir. Um, let's say boat C presses a distress signal. Mm -hmm. it, it gets acknowledged by a land-based station from what I've read, that switches boat C's radio to channel 70, depending it, upon the radio. Depending on the radio, okay. yes. Okay. At that point, does the Coast Guard try to communicate verbally with boat C, or is this all just done under the radar? Oh, I guarantee you, we're going to be giving you a call. I want to know more information than just your position. As I said earlier, I want to know a description. If I can mm -hmm. ask you personally, and you can tell me how many people are on board because that I cannot find out unless I talk to you. Right. How many people am I looking for now? So you hit the Mayday button, it goes out on channel 70. It'll change your radio, the transmit to channel 70. However, you won't see it change. The frequency itself won't change on the display. It'll just go out, all right? I shouldn't say that. Most radios, it's not gonna show that you transmitted on channel 70. It's just gonna say, I transmitted a signal. And that's what it's going to say. Now, all that's being done on channel 70 digitally, and then we get it on channel 70 and to go through the whole process. But we're going to call you back on 16. Okay. Is that why you have to hold it in for a certain amount of time, too? I mean, so like a kid on the motor, screwing around with it or something, couldn't just flip it? And, I mean, is there a certain amount of time you have to hold it on then so it's not an accidental, you know, type? It's manufactured and manufactured. I mean, it's. I hate to go keep going back to that, but I, I really can't 